Welcome to Markets in Focus. My name is Joe Bell, and today we're going to talk about some of the most interesting financial market themes that I'm observing, and also give you a few key takeaways to help you navigate the markets yourself. So first, restaurants and parks have actually outperformed the S&P 500 since the beginning of 2019, believe it or not. Number two, market, I don't think, has fully priced in the tax raises increase that is about to come. Let's talk about why. And then finally, inflation tends to be a big concern among investors. Let's take the other side of the argument and talk about the aging population and how that actually might bring down any potential rapid inflation. So let's take a look at the chart of the relative performance of the service industries in the U.S. economy since the beginning of 2020. Uh, the black line, the S&P 500 is also on the chart here, but a couple notes from the chart. First off, we saw during the drawdown, while the S&P 500 was down 31%, the average service industry was down 67% with cruise lines down 84%. That's an incredible decline for cruise lines. We've seen them recover. They're obviously still the laggard. I think that kind of makes sense. It might be the last part of the economy that that we start to see demand to when you're talking about the service related industries. Um, but look, those restaurants and parks, they've, they've done really well, especially restaurants navigating this pandemic world of deliveries and takeouts. And I think they're being rewarded for that. And then obviously airlines just below break even, casinos and hotels above break even. I think those expectations for growth of the next 12 months are sort of priced into some of these industries going forward. Now tax plan from Biden, we've seen the proposal and take a look at this chart. This is the, the federal effective tax rate predicted along with what we've experienced in the past. So a couple points here, what goes into these numbers. Number one, that corporate tax rate, that seems to be getting the most news. That is potentially jumping up from 21 to 28%. We need to remember number one, that's only halfway to where it was in that, that pre-Trump tax cut world when it was at 35%. But the big one underneath the surface that may not be getting as many headlines is the global minimum tax. And that's going to target these multinational companies that operate different locations, foreign subsidiaries in different countries with different tax rates. And it basically says, hey, let's see your receipts of what you've paid. And if you haven't paid this amount, you owe us more money, okay? And that rate is potentially doubling. And that's why you're seeing those red effective tax rates higher than the, tr the pre-Trump tax cut back in 2017, even though corporate taxes are still lower. Now let's talk about, if you look at sell side analyst here, uh, the expectations for earnings per share in 2022, full year for the S&P 500 at about just over $200 for the year. Now, what's interesting is not just the number, but the trend. We can see since the tax cuts have been, the tax in increases have been announced, we haven't seen a decline in these. This is somewhat surprising, but not really. If you look back in 2017, what we saw where they were actually waiting until the tax bill was passed before earnings per share estimates were increased and before companies started to increase their guidance. It was sort of a wait and see approach. So I think the market is somewhat in tune with this, but it's hard to say it's fully priced in when you see big pockets of the market like this that are actually just completely unchanged. And then inflation. We're, we all know about the concerns with massive government spending, the economic reopening, the, the stimulus, and what that can mean for inflation. Do we see a repeat of the 70s when we had double digit inflation? Maybe not, all right? So let's take a look at why not. Look at the labor force growth rate. Back between 1964 and 1979, we saw 2.5% annual growth rate. And the reason for that was population growth. Population was booming, all right? Today, the past 20 years, we've only seen, past 30 years rather, we've only seen 1.1%. So we're, we're a little bit more mature economy right now, but we're not even just that we're actually an aging population. If you look at the number of workers below 55 to over 55, it's just about three to one right now, okay? There are three times as many young workers versus old workers. At the peak between uh, in the around 1980, it reached nearly eight. So there were about eight times as many young workers as older workers. So the, the demographics were completely different during that time period. And I think that's one thing that could potentially suppress any inflation when you have a, a massive amount of people exiting the workforce relative to new entrants. And finally, this is a fun story that might be one of my favorites I've told so far. Over in Italy, they've actually had to crack down on public workers not showing up for work and still receiving payment. The investigation is called part-time 
And one of the big culprits has been what they're calling the king of absentees, a 65 year old gentleman who was able to work uh, completely no hours for 15 years and still collect nearly $650,000. Uh, they are cracking down on that, but he had one heck of a run, but I think it's probably good news for the economy that they stop paying people to sit on the couch. Uh, but with that, let me thank everyone for watching, and I will see you next time.